Welcome to the place where we gain knowledge through the lens of creativity. I am Aaron Dworkin, and this is Artful Science. Thanks again for joining me here on Artful Science. Today's show is Illustrated Space, Visualizing the Cosmos. And our guest is Aurore Simone, who serves as the scientific illustrator at Sonoma State University in what was known as the NASA Education and Public Outreach Group, which is now known as Ed Eon STEM Learning. Aurore, welcome to the show. Oh, thank you. It's nice to be here. Well, so I'm so excited uh, to have you on the show. Um, and to be frank, this is an area prior to kind of, you know, doing some research and researching about your extraordinary work, I wasn't really familiar with scientific illustration, like kind of knew it kind of existed, but didn't really understand it. So why don't we just start off with that with, from your perspective, what is scientific illustration? And what does a scientific illustrator do? So my perspective, it really actually goes back to um, when I was younger, I always liked science and especially astronomy, but it was just like so hard, you know, so hard to understand for me, it's just overwhelming. And I always wanted to find a way to kind of bring it to anyone, bring, you know, science concept, difficult science concept to anyone. And, you know, everybody is kind of visual this day, so it really fits well to bring, you know, science data into a, a beautiful image um, to kind of help people understand what might be going on, you know. So it's kind of translating data, you know, numbers into a pretty picture to simplify it. <laughs> right, which I love. And of course, that whole idea of, you know, a picture is, a, you know, a thousand words. And, and I certainly know I would certainly rather view a thousand words than read them, you know, in terms of, uh, you know, scientific uh, text, and especially coming from, you know, parents and, and family who are who are all scientists. Um, so could you kind of share, like, so we can understand, how does that process work uh, for developing an image for you? So I would imagine it's a little different than a traditional illustrator. And so curious, kind of what's that process from the initial conception that ultimately results in a, in a final product? So most of the time, it kind of depends for, for um, in my area with astronomy, there are not a lot of references, obviously, out there, because usually a science illustrator, when they're asked to do an assignment, they're going to do research. They're going to get familiar with the subject, you know, what they um, need to illustrate. They're going to research. They're going to talk to the scientists. They're going to gather data and then kind of, you know, back and forth talking to figure out what to do, then think about what or how they want to illustrate, you know, what they're being asked for. And then, you know, go for it and come up with ideas, draft a, a lot of back and forth. As far as my um, area, it's a lot harder because, again, you don't have a lot of references. So I still do the same thing. It's still a process. I talk to scientists, you know, I ask them, okay, what do you, what can you share? First of all, what are you trying to get, you know, out of this? What do you want to, um, people to understand, visualize? And then I ask that, I mean, they share, you know, their data and their papers and scientific data. So I try to understand the, the best I can, you know, I ask questions, but bringing it to, um, you know, a few simple words, a concept, I ask about, you know, color schemes and stuff, and then I kind of run with it, you know, I use my own, a lot of imagination. Of course, I look up some, you know, real data images, but it's kind of far away from what you usually end up because you can't really see what's going on out there. So that's my approach. And then again, there's back and forth. I share what I've done and then um, they give me feedback. And from, from there, we just um, end up with the final image. So that's kind of the process. 
Wow. And is a, is, a, is a big driver of that, not just what the scientist themselves wants or kind of wants to capture, but also kind of who the ultimate audience will be and kind of what they're, what they want to achieve with the audience or? Um, most of the time, uh, it's, a lot of the illustrations that I have to do, it, it really goes with the scientific paper. Mm -hmm. So it's not like um, it's not like a, a um, like a pretty landscape. It's not random so much. Usually, there's really like if you take a you know a galaxy or two you know binary neutron stars, you're showing a concept like they're rotating around each other. You're showing a black hole or an explosion. So there's a specific um, target, I guess I can call it. Um, and so there is some freedom and not freedom, and there is still, you know, I mean, they know what they want in some ways, but in some other ways, they're kind of like me. They don't really know what this is going to look like, except for the scientific data. What I do, though, uh, that I like to mention that I um, that's helpful, I think, is I usually try to pull um, for to inspire me as far as texture, colors, and stuff to illustrate things is to kind of look into nature around, you know, what you see here on earth so that people can relate a little bit more because I mean, in, in a micro and, and a micro scale, what we find here is really what's out there. Mm -hmm. And so um, uh, it's not super obvious for, you know, the viewer, but this is kind of how I bring um, things into life. And so if that makes sense. Definitely, absolutely, and it's and it's really fascinating as you think about that, and and whether it was one of these that was in a scientific journal. Do you have a a favorite image or two that, as you reflect back, either meant the most for you, or that you feel kind of had the most impact in terms of because you were able to help illustrate this this you know this scientist or researcher were able to achieve this or build awareness for this? Is there anything that kind of stands out for you? Well, the work that I did for um, when the, the gravitational waves were discovered um, by the LIGO mission uh, observatory, um, that's, I think, it was kind of a turn for me and in, in my scientific illustrator career. It was just, um, I don't know, it was amazing. and working on those images, I would, you know, zoom in and I felt like I was right in space, right, you know, viewing at the object, right, it's just that that was, yeah, I would say the, the, the work I did for that project was uh, awesome. what stands out for me. And, and for that, could you kind of help us visualize, were you actually illustrating gravitational waves or how does that work? Um, not quite. I mean, it's again, that's just something you can't really see. So it can be illustrated, but I was mostly illustrating um, what was happening. And it was, it's black holes really and a couple of binary neutron stars that I got to do. So it's really a um, black hole, what's happening with the disc around and everything going around. And I'm, again, I'm gonna just talk artistic point of view. And when I was illustrating this, you know, so a black hole, we're gonna have a black hole in the middle. But when, when I was doing the disc around and um, using the texture, it was like gold particles going around. Again, it's just like the visualization and people can look it up and they'll see what I'm talking about. But it's the, the whole dy dynamics, you know, going on with the, what's what's happening. And then, you sh I don't know, it's just a, a whole very pretty picture to me that more than, you know, the science, because obviously I can't understand. Well, I don't totally understand the science into it, but I don't know, altogether, I, I think it's fascinating. Oh, that's it's it's amazing. And um, and as you kind of think about it from that artistic point of view, do you have kind of an artistical like the scientist has their goal? They want to, you know, do this for their audience, for a journal or for their paper or for whoever might be they want to kind of share their concepts with. But as an artist, do you kind of have a goal that you see through your illustrations? Like at the end, you're like, I want to achieve this as someone looks at these these images that literally I create. 
Yes, definitely. I don't know if I can explain what it is, so that you know, thinking of it, but I because very quickly in the way I work, I don't know if it's you know, it might be just me, but I have a pretty quick idea of what things should look like according, you know, according to me once again. But and so I'm going for that. And visually, I think you know it. It usually uh, it represents pretty well what the scientists want, and according to their feedback, that's kind of what I get too. So in the end, yes, it's about you know being beautiful, but also representing the science. And so I think usually I have a pretty good balance between the two, and the scientists are pretty happy with it. So. Awesome. Awesome. Well, unfortunately, we're just about out of time, but it's typical. It's in a typical show where I'm often talking with someone who's on the science side. I'll end by kind of asking them about some artistic side of what they do. And of course, you have all of this core focus in the artistic work that you're doing. But I wanted to ask you because you also have not just an interest, but a significant ability um, and engagement with synchronized or I guess also now called artistic swimming and so just wondering how did that come about and how do you engage with it well um, my oldest sister actually was doing that when I was you know growing up and so I joined her although it's kind of older um, but then um, what I I took it a step further being artistic and all <laughs> and um, I like, kind of like kids in their bathtub was a little rubber duckies. I bring my own toys and um, I started using a hula hoop and spinning it, you know, rotating, kind of like doing my own galaxies up there <laughs> with the, the rotating disc. Anyway, so I play with a hula hoop and I built a couple of routines using the hoop, kind of like uh, the rhythmic gymnastics uh, routine, except in the water. So yeah, that's my hobby. Awesome. And is there something about kind of the movement in water or that kind of draws you? I was curious kind of how, you know, in the one you're working with this visual medium with illustration, and then it seems like, but you're also drawn to kind of the water and that medium to also bring some artistry to bear. Just curious, what kind of, is it a connection with the water? Uh, definitely, that's for sure. I mean, you know, water is very healing, but um, the, also, you know, I learned a lot from water because the reflection of light through the water also helped me a lot with my illustration. Um, and also kind of, you know, again, I was talking about rotations and stuff and things that are happening. So there is science everywhere, basically. And it's just a matter of observing it and seeing it and just paying attention. It's, yeah, it, it can be uh, very rewarding in many ways. Oh, well, this has just been amazing. Thank you so much for sharing this incredible work that you do. Aurore Simone, thank you for helping us gain knowledge through the lens of creativity here on Artful Science. You're welcome. Thank you.